Hey guys, Luna here, back with another Skyrim Special Edition console mod video. Another day and another five more mods to tell you guys about, and it's getting to the point where we may have to double our efforts as we get closer to release in one week's time, the amount of mods released will start to increase faster and faster, so I may have to start doubling the amount of videos I upload. Just for this week, so I can cover as many as possible. When the game does come out, I will obviously switch to confirm mods to mod showcase videos instead. But for now, we have five more mods that you can add to your library right now in Xbox One, so you can install the mod as soon as you get the game. And PS4 players, you will hopefully get some mods before release, but only one week to go and it's not looking too good. But I will keep you up to date on any PS4 mod news if and when I get it, but for now it's all quiet. The first mod is Castle Volcar Rebuilt, a mod to allow the player to clean up debris and rebuild Castle Volcar to its former glory. The North Tower is also converted into a player home with safe storage. After the Dawnguard quest is over, you have ever wondered why nobody bothers to build the castle. Harkon may have been an obsessive lazy vampire, but that doesn't mean you need to be. Now you can rebuild the castle as you see fit. Whether you're a vampire lord yourself and just want the stinking mess cleaned up, or a member of the Dawnguard seeking to expand into a new base and occupy some territory. At several locations throughout the main hall, ruins, courtyard, and undercroft and the docks, behind the castle will be rubble piles or debris columns you can use to clean up the area around them. You'll need a pickaxe to do so, but that's it. After that you'll need the patience to see things through. If you're playing as a vampire, your existing vampire minions will continue to provide their normal functions, just in a much cleaner environment. After all, what are we? Vampires or slovenly trolls? To clear the path to the courtyard, speak to Gary Marathi as usual. If you're playing as the Dongard, cleaning up rooms in the main guild hall area will bring new Dongard members to man the stations that the vampires used to. The blacksmith, apothecary, and vendors will all offer services appropriate to Dongard members. Ownership of the various castle cells will also be marked properly, so you won't have to get accused of stealing stuff you fought so hard to take. As a small added bonus, Fort Dongard will get cleaned up properly too, no more cobwebs lurking about. If playing as the Dongard, Serena can now be directed to move into the castle and use her cleaned up room by lighting the candle on the corner of her nightstand. When the flames are lit, she will stay at the castle when dismissed. If they are out, she will stay at Fort Dongard. The candle will be lit permanently if playing as the vampire to indicate she stays there when dismissed. As an added bonus, she will make full use of the entire cell in either location instead of just being narrowly restricted to the main hall areas. The Larica's study in the hallway outside that leads down to the secret fireplace passage will clean up when you go to the Soul Cairn to tell her Harkon is dead. Best to leave the senior vampire handle her own affairs. So if you've ever been disappointed by the way the castle is and it isn't too clean and friendly, then that has changed with this mod. Next up we have Hermit's Hideaway. This is just a quick and simple mod. This is a small house on an island outside of Raven's Rock. A small boat will take you to the island from Raven Rock. You will need to disable borders for this mod to work. To disable borders you have to download a mod we talked about in the previous video which was no border solstime and then you can use this mod properly. Okay, so a nice simple mod there if you want to live in this hideaway. It's very fantasy looking, grown into mushrooms and stuff so that's a pretty cool mod. Next we have a nice little simple immersive mod and it's called Point the Way. Ever travel the roads and wonder how will people find their way? Have you ever noticed the roads in many places simply don't have the signs that tell you where to go when you're travelling from them? If you were a foreign visitor to Skyrim, you'd have no hope of being able to travel the intricate road networks without stopping to read your map every so often. Even when you're at major intersections, worry no more. While you weren't looking, the Empire sent out its trusty civil engineers and they set about marking the roads to better assist travellers in finding their way. This mod's aim is fairly simple. Road signs have been placed at several major intersections that were either lacking signs or didn't have enough signs to indicate the full extent of where you could travel on the roads. In some cases, the smaller towns and villages aren't even mentioned, despite Bethesda having created signs for them. Others that were pointed the wrong way or had the wrong city being expressed have been fixed as well. Next we have Funny Followers and you can tell by the fact that it's a train that it is by Trainways. And this is a mod that I have seen a couple of people really looking forward to. But now you've probably realised that there weren't any followers out there that really tickle your fancy. You're disappointed and expected followers that were a bit more, well, funny. Luckily I've heard your prayers and would like to introduce you to my friends, the Funny Followers. They're quite funny and happy and friendly. Their names are Mr. Man and Guy McPherson. There is nothing strange about them, they are definitely not otherworldly demons here to drain all hope from the world. In terms of features, you get two followers that can be summoned at will, who are not weird and do not want to devour your soul. These followers do not talk, so you don't have to worry about any nasty commentary, any whispers or voices in your head telling you to burn everything to the ground are unrelated to this mod. These followers are both combat capable and undying. 
but this is because they train very hard and not because they satanically destroyed all life around them. People also randomly drop dead around them, but they have nothing to do with it, we swear. The ability to not die, well, technically they do die, but another one will spawn in their place. They're fast breeders, any perceived side effects where all who witness their death suddenly go into murderous frenzies is simply a coincidence. These followers are also made of pure despair, and any item given to them will despair forever. And this makes them great disposal bins for all those precious items you want to get rid of. So if you're looking for a different style of follower, and a pretty disturbing one, then you can download this mod. Our final mod is Aethernautics, again by Trainways, a space travel mod. Visit to Aetherius occurs even less frequently than to Oblivion. For the Void is a long expanse and only the stars offer portal for ethereal travel, or the judicious use of magic. The expeditions of the Ramen dynasty and the Sunbirds of Alinor are for the most famous attempts in our histories, and it is cosmic irony that both of them were eventually dissolved for the same reason. The untenable expenditures required to reach magic by Magicka. Though thought impossible by lesser minds, the study and practice of travel to other realms via physical travel was long ago practiced by the great races of old. To them, it was known as Mananautics. Aethanautics, and screw this, this rocketry stuff is too hard, let's go kill babies. To us, it's known as space travel. While time has done its work on the Altmer and Imperials, their ancient starships lost to history and apathy, there have emerged rumours of the third race, the Dwemer, and their lost practices. They say in the deep mountains lies an enormous ruin, holding within a fantastic ship capable of travel to other worlds, and to an adventure worthy enough to fight their way through the defences of this lost complex and reactivate this machine. It would be an unimaginable treasure, the last Aether ship, a worthy prize for mage and warrior and thief alike. For features, you get a large open dungeon for the player to explore, filled with traps, lava and a new type of centurion, an unmarked quest to discover and reactivate the lost aether ship, a new type of weapon, a harkaboos gun, five available types can be found and come complete with rifle sounds and effects. The available types are omic harkabus, the heavy, the standard, the magmatic and the ethereal. Once you reactivate it, the player must use the aether ship as their own. It comes complete with cargo and docking bays, engineering and maintenance shafts, weapon systems and even full bridge with a captain's chair. The ship may also be used as a player home and quarters are provided with basic services. You can also use it to call down orbital strikes. The ability to use the ship to travel to other planes such as Sofacil and Maser, one of Nim's moons. And you also get your very own space helmet and spacesuit. So there we have it guys, five more mods that you can download right now for Skyrim Special Edition on Xbox One. Maybe some of these will come to PS4, we just don't know yet. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all next time for more Skyrim Special Edition.